Blog Talk Radio. I have yet to discover a job where it pays to look less than your best. Style is the way you say who you are without having to speak. There's no one else like you in the world. You are unique. Find your unique style and you will never again have to agonize over what to wear. Call for a free 15-minute conversation to see how Style with Aplomb can change your image and move you to greater success. 404-428-2527. That's 404-428-2527. Unmarket Your Business, the podcast, born out of the need to share strategies and techniques that really work to market your business. Think yellow page ads and cold calls are your only choices? That's so last century. You're about to learn tested, tried and true marketing techniques you can apply and master, ones that feel authentic instead of salesy, strategies that are true to who you are and how you want to present yourself to your ideal clients. Let's join our host, Carol Joyce Dunlop, in the studio now and allow business success to move forward. Hey, good afternoon, everyone. This is Carol J. Dunlop, your hostess with the mostess (laughs) and also Amazon number one international best-selling author for my book, I'm Mark Your Business. How are you doing? It is Thursday, almost the end of the week, and Wow, we are almost into May. Do you believe that? I mean, it seems like just yesterday we were talking about, you know, end of the year, happy new year, getting ready to start a brand new year, and now it's almost May. The year is almost halfway over. Well, let me not say that because halfway is like June and it isn't even May yet. But you know what I'm saying, time time goes by. Time goes by fast. And I hope you are making the most of your time. So number one, Thank you so much for listening. If you are listening live or you are listening on demand, either one, it is totally awesome of you to be here. I am so glad that you are here. It is totally amazing. Um, I always feel very blessed and very fortunate to be able to do this podcasting thing. And podcasting is freaking exploding. It seems like everywhere you look, someone's doing a podcast. I mean, even big names. Big name people, big stars and stuff. They have a podcast. Everybody has podcasts out right now. And don't let that don't let that stop you from doing your podcast. Because my goal is to work with women entrepreneurs who struggle to market their business successfully online. And podcasting is one of the ways you can do it. Why? Because you can come into someone's life, come into their, you know, basically their living room in wherever they are, in their ear, if they're if they're working out at the gym, if they're going to work back home, if they're in between client appointments, it doesn't matter. You can, you know, they'll, if they like you, they'll squeeze the time in to listen to you. So the subject for today, you are who you think you are. I came up with this because, you know, I struggle with who who I am and and, am I good enough to do this and am, am I the people that the person that people think I am type of thing. And sometimes I think that I am the bomb diggity. A lot of times I think that. And sometimes I think, like, who am I to be doing this stuff? And, you know, why are people following me and listening to me? And then I get some I get some really cool validation from my clients and my people who have either listened to me, talked to me, worked with me, done what I told them to do, and they start having success. And I'm like, woohoo! yeah, I am that good. So, you know, our mind plays tricks on us so many times. And that's why I wanted to address this, because this podcast is all about marketing your business, right? It's all about you getting out there in front of your ideal perfect audience who are your prospects. They're, you know, they're they don't even know you at first, then they become leads, then they become prospects, and then they become clients. So, you know, that's kind of the cycle that everyone goes through. And just getting out in front of them and explaining what you do to them, showing them how you can solve their problems, stop their pain, and then they'll start buying from you. That's that's the gist, right? But sometimes I know that we don't think that we can do that or we don't think that we're worthy to do that. And what really brought this home to me and why I dip it, why I'm doing this whole episode is last night I was watching 
one of my totally favorite shows, my 600 pound life. And they were going over where, where are they now? And the lady that they had on there, I believe her name is Melissa. She was like one of the first people to ever get gastric bypass surgery, like almost 12 years ago now. And she is defying the odds because she was almost 700 pounds and she lost that weight and she has maintained her loss. Although in the episode, it showed how she went up and down. She's time of that episode, she was like 150 pounds over her goal weight. So she was at two something and she was kind of heading up to 300 pounds. But the thing was, she had still maintained that loss of like, I think she said she lost almost 500. She was, so pretty much she had maintained the majority of the loss. But yet and still, she felt like she wasn't doing what she told people to do. Have you ever felt that way? You know, I can I can tell you how to do all this stuff. I can be awesome and tell you how to, you know, how to get clients, how to start a website, how to do this, how to do that. But I'm not doing it myself. Have you ever felt that way? I'm pretty sure most of us have. I know I have. That old thing about the cobbler's children have no shoes. And we want to stop that. And all through that episode, she just kept fighting with that whole thing. And it was one particular scene that really, really got to me. It, she was she was um, invited to speak at this big conference for people who wanted to lose weight. And Dr. Nazarden, the uh, surgeon that the show was kind of built around, who works on morbidly obese people and helps them to lose weight, he is like the funniest ever, I swear. He tickles me to death how he <laughs> tells people the truth when they start talking to him and say, well, you know, I can't lose weight or I can't stay on a diet because, and he's like, uh-uh-uh, you're not doing it because, and he'll just lay it out like no expression or anything. He had me just laughing. Anyway, um, she was invited to a conference where they were all kind of all these people, and they had like over 400 people that had registered for the conference, and they were there not only to hear her speak but to hear Dr. Nazar and to find out ways that they could actually get control of their life, lose this weight, and start living the life they wanted. And she had gone to one of the – she had gone to buy something to wear to the event. And she was in the dressing room, and she was trying on these pants, and this top, and she just broke down and started crying like, you know, I lost all this weight, and I've gained like 100 and something pounds back, and these things, they don't fit, and it don't look good, and she just busted out crying. And her friend came in there, and she said, are you crying about these pants? Don't cry about these pants. These pants are ugly. Get some other pants. <laughs> it was just so like, oh, okay. You know, have you ever been that way? You know, you broke down, and you're crying, and you're boohooing, and you're all sad, and you're just like, oh, woe is me. Life hates me. You know, I can't do anything. And and then you're really crying about the wrong stuff. You're just upset about the wrong thing. If you were to just pick yourself up and be your wonderful self, you could really make some headway. You could really do what you want. And it doesn't matter what things that come in your way or what thing that life throws your way or the enemy, you call him the enemy. I don't say the devil or Satan, I say the enemy. Because it, it, it can be any kind of form throws in your way how you can get past that, right? So that that was, I think that kind of inspired me since I, I didn't have a guest today that I wanted to come and just talk some truth to you and share my journey with you and let you know how, you know, you can turn your stuff around. Stop thinking that crazy, negative, oh, my God, woe is me stuff, and let's start thinking awesomeness. So um, I, in 2016, the middle of 2016, as you know, I've talked about this before, I started on a new track. I was, I had two businesses, and I was going crazy. I really was. And I knew that I had to do something. I didn't know what, so I attended a Pamela Bruner event, and, of course, being the person I am, I always like to talk and be in front of people. I got to the microphone, and I said, my biggest problem is I don't know. I don't want to be the personal trainer who also does websites or the website designer who is also a personal trainer. And Pamela told me right there in front of, like, this was like 500 people, I think, or thereabouts. She said, Carol, pick one. Just pick one. It doesn't matter if you want to be a trainer or if you want to be the web designer pick one of those and go full force. That was the hardest decision I think I've ever made in my life, but I decided to go with being the um, web designer, social media person, and that's what I've stuck with. And that was so hard to not do the trainer thing because for a long time people were still asking me, still wanting to do it. And I just, I really didn't have the heart to do it anymore. I really didn't want to do it anymore, so that's why I stopped. So I had to work on my new What's my elevator speech, my unique proposition, all that good stuff. And I started 
thinking about who do I work with and what do I want to do for them. So I came up, this this is what I tell people now. I work with women entrepreneurs who struggle to market them, market them, market their business. Let me start over. I work with women entrepreneurs who struggle to market their business online successfully. So that includes your WOW website, email marketing, content marketing, and social media marketing. And the bulk of the women who work with me are former corporate women who are used to uh, managing these teams. You know, they're directors or VPs and things like that, but now they're coming into their own business and they got to do everything themselves. And they're like, well, how do I do this? I don't have a team anymore. And I help them, you know, not necessarily, I'm not the one to help you create the team, but I'm, I'm the one who helps you get things in place. So you can market your business online because even if you're a, if you're even if you're a brick and mortar store, you have to be online these days. You really do. You can't avoid it. So I've been telling myself that, and that's that's the people, that's the women entrepreneurs that I want to work with, that I've been working with. I surveyed, you know, I looked over the clientele who who did the best with me, and that that was the bulk of the clients. And then yesterday, so funny, yesterday I talked with a, a new client who's going to start working with me, and guess guess what she is. She is a corporate woman who's coming out of she's coming out of corporate. She's actually retiring, taking early retirement, and she's been starting her own business. And she says, "Carol, I have no idea where to start. You know, the website and how do I get that? And what's, what are the costs? And how long does it take? And what do, you know, what do I need to do to get this going?" And I'm like, "Boom! That that is just the divine intervention of God putting." Out, putting in front of me the people who I say I want to work with, the people who I've been working with, the people who I get the most out of, and there she is right there, just confirming, validating everything. And it was all because that's what I started talking about. That's what I started putting out into the universe. That's who I want to work with and relying on God to bring me these people. And boom, there she was. There she was. I mean, she's just only one of them, but it's like, Wow. That, if that isn't a validation, I don't know what is. Okay, my second thing. My second thing that's been happening is, uh, remember I told you I'm going on tour. A 10-city tour, 10 different cities. My clients, I'm going to the the cities where my clients are. So, number one, I can meet them. I haven't met a lot of them. We've only operated online. And they're going to they're gonna be my ambassador or host for the event the tour stop that I have in each of the city. Did I have any idea how I was going to get this done? Heck no. I just knew that's what I wanted to do. And I knew that in order to do this, I needed to get sponsors because I don't have the money myself to go out there and fly to all these places, stay in all these hotels. And even though I'm going to be selling the book and the book tour is going to be a series of workshops and all that, I, I you know, nothing's in place yet. Well, very little is in place. I can't say nothing, but very little, except for the idea that God downloaded into into my spirit. So uh, last year, when when uh, late last year, when April Frank Hunt announced that she was going to do Spark and Hustle here in Atlanta, I was like, I gotta go. I gotta be there. I didn't even know what was on the agenda, but I knew I had to be there. So I went last last weekend. I was blessed to be able to be there. And guess who else was there? Robert Candelera. And guess what he does? He does sponsorship for influencers. And guess what? He had a master class there, and he just confirmed the things that I had already started put it, start started putting together for my sponsors, the sponsors that I wanted, how to get them, how to work with them, how to choose who I wanted, and how to approach them. Because he trains people. It's so funny. He trains people. He trains companies what to look for when they're trying to, when they want to, when they want sponsors. I mean, when they want to sponsor something, he trains them what to look for. And then he trains business owners how to work with sponsors. Isn't that something? So that was a blessing. So I'm like, okay, I'm on, on the right track. And then also September of last year, I attended Lori Mann's sponsorship and sales secrets live. So two experts who are already getting sponsors who are doing a doggone thing. So I'm like, okay, okay, I, I can do this. And uh, then I said, well, I want to really build up the audience and build up the anticipation of getting this thing done. So I said, how can I do that? I'm going to go on a 30-day book tour before I go on the 10 City Live book tour. So 30 days, I'm going to in the virtual book tour that I'm going on is going to be podcasts, Facebook Lives, YouTube Lives, and uh, guest posting on different 
um, blogs. So what landed in my mailbox today, my email mailbox today, but the chance for me to get the ultimate directory of podcasts. And there's this gentleman who's doing this, how to market, how to profit from podcasts or something, podcast guessing. Boom, right there. That directory, I downloaded that sucker, and it was, it's 147 pages long. He has 600 of the top podcasts that you can get on and how to get on them. I'm like, dang, wow. All you, All I had to do was think. Think about how I'm going to go on this book tour. I don't know how to do it. But then God started putting all these things in place. Now, of course, I got to do the work. I, I got the directory, but I don't have anything else. So I got to read the directory, figure out who these podcasts are, who, you know, is in, who are the podcasts that are going to connect with my ideal perfect audience and get on them, building up that thing. Wow. So my thing in all of that, you are who you think you are, and I want to leave you with this for a second. We're going to take a quick break to acknowledge our sponsor, but think about this for a second. Your stinking thinking is stopping your progress because I love this quote right here. Whatever you think, I can or I can't. You're correct. That's by Henry Ford. Whatever you think, you can or you can't. Mm, That's powerful, right? So I knew that I could do this tour. I know that I can do this tour. I am going to do this tour. God has laid out the plan for me to do it. He's given me the resources to take advantage of doing it. And he's pretty much said, here, Carol, here's the red carpet. You wanted to do it? Here, boom, let's do it. So all I got to do is put the work in, and I'm going to do it. So we're going to take a quick break to acknowledge our sponsor. And when we come back, I'm going to share with you five steps that you can do to think better, realer, I like to say, more realer. Back in just a second. Here is what one client had to say. I was struggling in my career and didn't understand why. I was working hard, getting to know the right people and putting myself forward every day, but I couldn't seem to get ahead. And then I remembered something Beryl taught me. The clothes we wear aren't just things we put on. They're a signal to the world about who we are and what we aspire to be. I was amazed at how quickly people's perception of me changed thanks to her advice. I received a huge raise at my yearly evaluation that reflected not only my hard work, but my value as an individual. More importantly, the confidence my new wardrobe gave me had opened up opportunities I never would have had previously. It's not about buying a new suit or watch. It's about changing how the world sees you and how you see yourself. I will forever be grateful to Beryl for teaching me that. Visit our website at www.stylewithaplomb.com to learn more about how we help clients change how the world sees them. That's www.stylewithaplomb.com. Awesome. Thanks for being here today. Thanks for tuning in. This is Carol J. Dunlop, your online wow strategist and number one international best-selling author, Amazon author. So I've been talking today, you are who you think you are, and I went over my story and some things that have happened. Oh, I had one more thing I wanted to share with you. My client, uh, Renee, T. Renee Garner, and her thinking. And when she released her book last year, she wanted me to do the cover for it. It, it kind of came out of nowhere because I wasn't originally going to do the cover. I was just going to uh, do the website, but it wound up, thank God, you know how things work out, that I, that I did do the cover. And what she did was she, her um, long, a person that she has admired for a long time, Lisa Nichols, she wanted to emulate the style and how she did her cover and her being on the cover and stuff. So we did that. So guess who she met just recently last weekend? Lisa Nichols. How about it? She showed her the book and it was like a wow compliment to her. So you're thinking, it's, your stinking thinking is stopping your progress. So let's get into some great thinking. I got five points from you for you 
to show you how to think better. Okay, number one, the number one thing you need to do is believe that you can do it. Whatever it is that you want to do, you have to believe, truly believe in your heart, not just say, I'm going to do it. You have to really believe that. You have to eat, sleep, and breathe that thing. Like, I'm going to make this happen. I don't care what I got to do. I am doing that. So that's number one. The second thing is you need to imagine that you did it already, that you're already doing it. Like my book tour, I am I am setting aside time each day or in the evening when I go before I go to sleep or when I first wake up or when I wake up at 2 a.m. in the morning with that, oh, my God, thing going on, that I am in each of these cities, that each of these clients that I have tapped to be my ambassador and I'm going through the workshop and we're having a blast and the people are there and they're enjoying the workshop, they're enjoying the book and the, the client is is being the hostess with the mostess, and we're just having a blast. So you have to imagine yourself doing this thing already, not something way off in the future. You don't even know what's going to happen. You're in it. You're doing it. Number three is to hang out with positive people. Negative Nellies are everywhere, let me tell you. And you can't really share your dream with everyone. You tell someone, yeah, I'm going on this book tour. Really, a book tour? How long, How much is that going to cost? How are you going to do that? How are you going to blah, 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 blah? Get it away from that person as fast as you can or if you can't get away from them politely just say okay you know don't say anything else don't argue with them just say okay fine whatever and you go do your thing because the revenge or the sweetness you're going to i shouldn't say revenge but the sweetness you're going to feel and getting that thing done and when you come back you don't even have to say i told you so you just show up you're just there right okay number four create a plan and a strategy to do this so i told you that I'm going on this book tour, I have no idea how I'm going to do it, but I knew I was going to attend Spark and Hustle. I did. Robert Candelero was there with Sponsorship for Influencers. Boom. I learned all I could from him there, and I'm, I'm creating, I have created this plan that I'm putting into place. I've already reached out to all the ambassadors, and if you're listening right now and I reach out to you, just know you got a day to reply back because <laughs> i got to get this thing in place because on May 1st, that first week in May, I'm going to be reaching out to sponsors. So i got to have my ambassadors in place because they are key. You are key. You're listening. You are key to this. And I sweeten the pot so we're not. they're not just hosting me and I'm coming in like, oh, okay, I'm the queen of book sales or whatever. We're doing this as a partnership. So they have – things that they can get out of it. You know, they're they're gonna be in the promotions, they're gonna they're gonna get promoted. You know, I'm putting them on this pedestal. Hey, here's this wonderfulness. They're along with the sponsors, the sponsors that get promoting. So it's like it's not just like they're just doing this just because they love me. All I know some of them will. Some of uh, others are like, Hey, I got my own stuff going, Carol, what's in it for me? You know, that channel everybody listens to what? W W-I-I-F-M, what's in it for me? So I'm telling them, this is in it for you. Come on, we're going to do this together. We're both going to profit. It's a win-win. You know, Stephen Covey always says about make it a win-win for everyone. So this is a win-win. And then number five, the final thing is to take action. So let me go over those again. Number one, believe that you can. That is key. Number two, imagine that you're already doing this thing that you're trying to do. You know, take some time to meditate, sink into it, let it fill your being, fill your spirit. And no matter what happens, because life is always going to happen. The dishes need to be washed, the car needs to be taken care of, the husband, the boyfriend, the kids, whatever, the business, everything needs to be done. So you need to imagine that even without all those roadblocks that you're going to get this thing done, whatever it is that you want to do, you're going to do it. Hang out with positive people, people who are always building you up and giving you positivity and saying things like, I see you, and I see you're doing a good job. Hang out with those people. Don't hang out with the negative Nellies who are always trying to pull you down. And then have a plan. Create a plan and a strategy to do this thing. Because nothing, they they say that hope is not a strategy, right? Hope is not a plan. I hope that, and I used to say that all the time. I still kind of say it, I hope. Because I do hope. I have hope. I, I love I love hoping, but you have to back it up with doing something. And sometimes I do fall down. I do, don't do what I'm supposed to, but then don't let that stop you. Get up, keep going through whatever, whatever curves that are thrown your way. You know, stick to that plan, stick to that strategy. And then number five, take action. You have to figure out how you're going to take this action. Well, for me, my thing was writing everything down. 
And you know how we love to write goals down, and me anyway, I can't say for you, but I love to write goals down and I never do them or I never get back to them. But I'm writing goals down. I actually have an accountabil- a couple of accountability partners and groups who I've said I'm going to do this. And for me, once I release it out of my mouth and tell people I'm going to do this, then I can come back and say, hey, I did it. Or, you know, I tried to do this, but it didn't happen, and this is my alternative plan. So that's all in the part of taking action. It doesn't mean that it's going to work the way you think it's going to work or work the way you hope it's going to work, but it does mean that it's going to work. Getting back to uh, Melissa, the lady that I saw on my 600-pound life, when she started this journey, she didn't know that at, you know, 12 years later she'd have three children, which if she wanted to have one, she had three, and that she would now be divorced and living as a single mother and then trying to fight this battle of, you know, losing this weight again, even though she hadn't gained all the way up to 700, she did put on 150 extra pounds, and now she's pursuing uh, being a motivational speaker. So your life doesn't always go how you think it's going to go. But if you have no plan or no strategy, it'll, whatever way it ends up is how it ends up. And if you don't want that to happen to you, then put your thinking cap on, get that brain to work, and, and figure out how you can make your life into what you really want it to be. And you have the, you have all the tools that you need to do this. So I just wanted to come come to you today, throw that out there, and help you because. You are who you think you are. You can be greater than you've ever thought you could be. And if you need help with this, if you need, if you say, if you're saying to yourself, Carol, I, I, I don't know, I don't know how to put this plan together. I'm here to help you. So I want you to go to csicorporation.com forward slash online wow and schedule your online wow assessment with me. We're going to look at your website, your social media. Everything that you got out there, and see what you're. How, why are you missing out on clients? What are you not doing? And then we're we're going to talk about what you need to do to stop missing out on clients right away. I mean, take take a lesson from Beryl. She signed up as a sponsor, and she's putting herself out there. She's totally. She's continually tweaking what she's doing, and you know, getting to. There's no perfect place. Like me, I started in 2016, actually. You know, on this. On this journey, there's no perfectness. It's always I'm, so many times I've changed what I've done. I'm changed what I'm doing, and you can too. You have to. A change is part of the game. But I want to help you. I want to be a part of the change. So again, go to csicorporation.com forward slash online wow. Schedule your assessment and let's see what's stopping you. And don't let it stop you anymore. And most of all, stop that stinking thinking. Start positivity. Get the positive people into your life. I'm here to help you and get some other people that are going to be positive and help you do what you need to do. So that's all I have for you today. Be sure be sure to join me again next week when I have a brand new episode for you. So have a great weekend and get out there and start taking action. See you next time. Thanks for listening. We truly appreciate it. For information about guests, products, or services that were mentioned in this episode, log on to our website at www.csicorporation.com slash unmarketing. To learn more, get a glimpse of our upcoming schedule, and join the unmarketing nation of entrepreneurs who are using marketing techniques that work right now. Until next time, keep moving forward.